it's used in lots of everyday goods that you consume on a regular basis. If you've to the supermarket and go from aisle to aisle, have a look at the inputs and the ingredients of some of the products that are on the shelves, you'll probably find part of them. If you think about some products such as soaps, toothpastes, food products such as crisps, Dorito crisps, ice creams and so on, you'll find palm oil in them. In fact, since the 1990s, the production of palm oil has pretty much doubled, uh, especially in certain areas of the world. If you think about Indonesia, where it's quite common to extract palm oil from, it's causing serious problems and it's causing really bad environmental damage. And that's what this video is all about. So this video, we are going to be looking at the negative externalities related to just production, not consumption, so we're only considering the production of palm oil, but we're specifically looking at the production of palm oil causing negative externalities. So, how they uh, actually, the process of, uh, I suppose, extracting palm oil, first of all, what they do is they clear out lots of space, and that's the deforestation part. And they'll do that by fires, which can kill off wildlife, but it's, it's, it's killing millions of acres of forest, and it's releasing billions of toxins of carbon emissions. So we can start to see now why the negative externalities are taking place, the issues of pollution, wildlife, even the long-term effects of this, such as climate change, all of this is, is taking place because of the increased rate of production and the extraction of palm oil. So in terms of looking at the diagram, and we look at the negative externalities diagram, it's, it's important to know the axis to start off with. So the vertical axis, when you should be drawing it, should be looking at the cost, the benefits and the price. When you're looking at the, uh, the horizontal axis, uh, you should be considering the quantity of, in terms of palm oil, and how much is being produced. Now, because it's a negative externality related to production, we were considering the cost of that production, and therefore the marginal social cost should be higher than the marginal private cost on that vertical axis, because there's a greater cost to society than the cost to the private uh, transaction. So when we look at the private transaction, just imagine, think about Doritos, uh, buying their supplies from the supplier, who are then obviously the cost of extraction of that palm oil as well. But the marginal social cost, we're looking at all the damage that it's causing and how it's impacting people who are not even involved within that transaction. So if you look at Q star, that is currently, uh, so within the diagram, Q star is where I suppose society would, would prefer it to be produced at. And Q1 is where it's currently being produced at. And the reason why it's being produced at Q1 at the moment is because the cost to the private industry or the, the firms that are involved within the transaction it is much lower than the cost of the environment, the cost of society. So therefore, what we need to do is we need to think of a way of getting from Q1 closer to Q star. And usually we need the help of the government, and that's why we have government intervention to try and avoid, I suppose, these kind of uh, demerit uh, inputs and, uh, and products being produced. How they can do that, there's lots of ways. There's lots of different policies that they could look at. So uh, some of the popular ones, we could think about um, taxes, pollution tax, carbon tax, so on. You, they, they could, they could obviously tax the firm based on the amount of pollution that they're producing. The issue with that is, it depends on the type of product. So for example, if you, if you increase the tax onto a, com uh, onto a company's product because of that pollution, but that product is, is very popular, it could be even deemed inelastic, then the firm will just pass that cost onto the consumer and the customer will still buy it. So it won't actually impact anything. It, it, if anything, it'll actually hurt consumer welfare even more because the lower income will be impacted more. However, if there's lots of alternatives, so for example, if you go down that supermarket aisle and you see lots of substitute products which do not use palm oil, then it'll be more effective because it'll make that more elastic and firms will probably react to more because customers will change their customer behavior and go for the cheaper products which don't include palm oil. Other, other methods that they could use is uh, tradable pollution permits. And again, it's trying to restrict the amount of pollution that they carry out. But one of the issues with that is sometimes it can be tradable and the larger firms, the bigger multinational firms, they can actually buy up more pollution permits so it doesn't actually change their behavior. So some of the other smaller firms that maybe don't give off uh, as much pollution from their process, their production process, they might be happy to trade it because they don't need it all. So it doesn't really impact the actual production process and the quantity will remain the same. Other ways they could do it, which I think is becoming more and more common, uh, is information. So if you think about at Christmas, if you think about the Iceland advert that went viral, that was, a, that was an amazing advert in terms of really educating the customer about the, the damage to wildlife caused because of palm oil. 
And I do believe that there is a symmetric information failure where customers know less than the producers. And therefore, what we need to do is we need to try and balance that out and get customers having more insight as to how palm oil is actually extracted to then realize the dangers and the damage of palm oil and look for alternative products. So I think information is, is, is one of the really effective ones at this moment in time. There's a few more extreme links that are going on. So, this, so some of the Indonesian governments, what they're trying to do is actually get, for example, the UK to do complete legislative bans on the use of palm oil as an input because they believe these big multinational firms, many of them may come from the UK, get them to stop it, then it will it, it will cut the need and it will cut the demand for those supplies and that'll stop the, the extraction of palm oil.